At Cute Circuit, we make the future of fashion. We do this by combining advances in smart materials and microelectronics with cutting-edge fashion design to create garments that do something spectacular. And when you hear phrases like wearable technology, you may think, this is something really new. This is probably a startup that's just occurred in the last year or two. Francesca and I have actually been designing wearable technology since 2001, which means that Cute Circuit is the world's first fashion wearable technology brand. And along the way, we've had to create new materials in order to realize many of the visions in our designs. And we're going to take you on a little bit of that journey today. But essentially, when we started out, we had this question in mind. We looked at the world around us and we said, technology seems to be revolutionizing everything, from healthcare to transportation to entertainment. And yet fashion still seems pretty much the same. It may change color or shape, but there were no real revolutions connecting us with our dig rich digital lifestyles. And that was, in a nutshell, the, the core idea behind Cute Circuit. And to show you what the future of fashion may hold, we'll actually start with one of our very first designs that we worked on together, to, to say that the future of fashion will be rich with multi-sensory experiences. And what you see here is the hug shirt. And the hug shirt is a t-shirt that lets you hug someone over distance. So imagine you're here in Cyprus, and your best friend is in Paris, and you want to send her a hug. You put on the hug shirt, you give yourself a squeeze, and sensors in the fabric capture where you're touching, how strong, and for how long. All this data goes Bluetooth in your cell phone, and is transformed into a hug message. And when your friend receives the hug message, of course, she's wearing the hug shirt 24-7, she told me. Her shirt is going to get warm and vibrate in the same areas that you touch on your shirt. So if you gave yourself a little pat on the shoulder, she's going to <laughs> So you can give small hugs and bear hugs. <laughs> so when we designed the hug shirt, we were invited to participate in an exhibition at the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago, where we designed the world's largest wearable display called the Galaxy Dress. And the person that happened to see the Galaxy Dress in that museum was the stylist of this woman. And he called us up on the phone and he said, listen, Katie loves your Galaxy Dress, and she wants to wear it to the Met Gala. And we were like, well, the dress belongs to the museum, but we could probably make something for her. When does she need it for? And they said, next Tuesday. It was a Friday night. <laughs> and so initially we said, oh, no, I'm sorry, we, we can't possibly create a dress in just three days. And that was it. We hung up the phone and we thought that that was done. About half an hour later, the phone rings, and it's Johnny. And he says, guys, Katie's crying. <laughs> <laughs> he says, she really wants your dress. And we said, okay, we have to do something Yeah, first. we cannot make Katie cry. <laughs> <laughs> so we stayed up for the next three nights flew to New York, physically delivered the dress to her hotel room, and she puts Stitch it on, it stitches her into the dress, she puts it on and looks at it in the mirror, and she says, guys, I love it, but it has to go faster. <laughs> so, in her hotel room, we have a dress with microprocessors, we reprogram the entire dress. And uh, I'll show you what she had to say about it. Before we start, though, I'll say, Cute Circuit is based in London. You'll see why I say this. Um, this is a company called Cute Circuit. They're from France, and um, I like, you know, things that light up. I love living in the future. I feel like when Blade Runner predicted the future, I'm living in it now. So she gets the idea of the future of fashion, <laughs> and she sort of became our unofficial spokeswoman. And. Uh, Having her wear one of our dresses gathered so much international attention. The day after the Met Gala, Katie was on every magazine cover all over the world, even on the cover of Women's Wear Daily that is considered the Bible for fashion. And so department stores started calling us and saying, well, guys, can we carry your collection? But not everybody goes to the Met Gala in evening gowns every day, so can you do something that is more ready to wear for us? And this is what we came up with. So the twinkle is the simplest version of what Katie was wearing, essentially. So we've used the same micro-technology that you might see today in, in motion trackers, but instead of simply doing something like counting your calories, this is turning your physical body movement into a visual display that people around the world can see. So, for example, if you're calm and you're sitting in a cafe, the shirt itself is really calm. But if you're excited, the shirt gets excited, too. <laughs> and the, the more I jump... <laughs> Lots of exercise trying this out. 
And the thing that is really nice that we did with this garment is that we also invented a method for embedding the microtechnology into the fabric of the garment. So the garment is stretched and very comfortable, but it can also be washed at 30 degrees in your washing machine with your usual soap and conditioner. <laughs> And the other dress that we designed was this K-dress. And the thing that we really love about the K-dress is that it has the similar micro-technology, but then it is also merging very advanced, high-tech materials with something that is very traditional, like silk pleating. And these pleats on the silk are made by the darling, old gentleman in London that is in his 70s, and he has been pleading for 50 years, and he uses the cardboard molds for creating the pleats that his great-grandfather used many years ago to create couture garments. The most amazing thing is that this lovely gentleman is originally from Cyprus. So, <laughs> I'm really excited to show this to you. <laughs> So Katie's first dress was a success, and she became a fan. And she said, guys, I'm going to introduce a new single on American Idol, and I want you to dress me for this. We said, well, OK, what's the single about? And she said, it's called E.T., where I'm singing from the perspective of a space alien. And so we said, OK, we're going to make you into a sexy space alien and give you a cat suit. And, uh, but what this gave us the opportunity to do was figure out a way that we could have an interactive fashion garment on stage and control it in real time while they're performing by adding real-time MIDI control to the system. Okay, we know all Katie's songs by heart, so <laughs> unless we get into an impromptu rock concert here, uh, <laughs> Ryan can talk about it. So as you can see, our designs tend to appeal to performers. And we had the opportunity to design jackets for the band U2 as well. You know, normally Bono gets all the goodies, but in this case they wanted to give our jackets to all four guys. We thought this was great, so we designed for them real-time video jackets so that we could send video from the light booth to the stage in real time while they're performing. And we had talked with our stylist, and they told us, you know, all the guys pretty much wear jackets, but we have to design something to match each, their individual style. So Bono got waxed cotton, and the edge got black leather, and the bassist got a, a white nylon jacket. And they said, but the drummer, Larry, he's n he'll only wear T-shirts. So you're going to have to design him a T-shirt. And we said, oh, man, this is a challenge. So we worked really hard to make the T-shirt look absolutely perfect. So it draped like a normal T-shirt. It felt like a normal T-shirt, but still had the interactivity that all the other jackets had. And we brought these to them in the Denver, Colorado Stadium. We set them up, and they came in to look at them. And Larry looked at the jackets, and he looked at his T-shirt, and he said, but those jackets are cool. I want one of those. <laughs> So overnight, we stitched, with whatever fabric we could find, a brand new jacket for Larry, and he wore it on stage the next day. And the thing that was were, like, really amazing for us was being there at the concert in the first date, and uh, the guys were going to sing Zuropa after, I think, 20 years uh, after performing it the first time, and they really wanted to have something special. And their stage was like, called the 360 stage, because they had the audience all around them, and they had this big cone of light and moving screens in the middle of the stage. And so the thing that they did is that they basically appeared with their jackets starting to light up, materializing from this cone that was like raising up. So it's sort of like this beam me up Scotty kind of effect. And it was just amazing. And even like the tiniest person at the far end of the stadium could see them. And when they got on stage, like 60,000 people all at once went, Whoa. And like for us, it was just like this sense of connection through music and through something visual that really connected them with their favorite singer it was just incredible to experience. <laughs>
So the very first example that I mentioned, the hug shirt, allowing people to send hugs over distance, this is one of the things that we had become known for was the fact that we had, were designing garments that were connected. This is connected fashion that allowed people to communicate over distance. So when we were asked to do a dress for Nicole Scherzinger on the red carpet, she said, I want to bring my fans with me as I'm arriving at this event so that more people can experience the event than just the people that are, happen to be there. And so we said, for her, we designed the world's first couture Twitter dress so that as she's arriving at the event, Fans all over the world using a special hashtag could send tweets to her dress in real time. So as she's arriving, wishes are coming in. <laughs> wishes are coming in from the internet and swirling around her dress. Now, when I told you the story about Katie and then I told you the story about you two, you might have caught a theme there that sometimes we have to do things on a very constricted deadline. So actually, when you watch this video, you'll see she sees herself in the mirror and that's when she sees the dress on for the very first time. the first couture Twitter dress by Cute Circuit, and it's crazy! Nicole Scherzinger making Twitter fashion history after wearing a crystal encrusted digital dress which lights up to spell out tweets sent by fans. It's a dress that they designed specifically for me, and um, I have all these LED packs and lights hidden on my body. And then all these gorgeous lights are coming down. The singer unveiled the creation at the star-studded launch of 4G at Battersea Power Station. So, up until... <laughs> We've been talking a lot about the sort of technological aspect of things, but I know the burning question in your mind is, what do the fashion police say about this? I absolutely <laughs> love this dress, regardless of the fact that you can, it has live tweets on it. It's one of the best dresses I've ever seen her wear. It's cut nice on her, it's not showing too much skin, but it is showing skin in the right places. Her hair and her makeup looks beautiful. It's amazing, like it, and I think it's a start of a new trend. I am absolutely obsessed with this. Yeah. We love that. <laughs> <laughs> so that, in a nutshell, sort of brings us up to speed to our first two collections that we showed at New York Fashion Week. And the thing that is really special about those collections is that it was the first time that fashion wearable technology was shown on a real catwalk. And the thing that we did is that we dressed up all the models, and then when the models were about to go out on the catwalk, we started handing them iPhones. And they're like, and what do I have to do with this? <laughs> We're like, well, you know, your dress is interactive, and now when you go out there, you're going to be in control of it. So you're going to decide what's going to look like, what's going to display, and when you want to do that. And so the models were really, really excited, and it was a great thing for us to send these garments out and let them do everything they thought of. And the thing that we really wanted to do with these garments, and also with accessories, but that we really want to put people in charge of what they wear. So it's not like any more like sort of normal fashion design, where the fashion designers, us, decide what you are going to wear. You sort of have a new sort of democracy into your garment, so you decide what's going to happen. And so for doing this, we basically design garments that are really beautiful, but then we designed an app that allows you to create your own design, or download design, or show tweets, or show text messages. And so our idea is just sort of creating an iTunes for fashion where you have one garment and then thousands and thousands of digital styles, so that is always new and fresh. And the other thing is that we also want to make it more sustainable, because when you think about fashion, sometimes it's not very sustainable. There is lots of manufacturing, and then the garments that are not sold end up in landfills and create lots of problems for the environment. So we really wanted to get rid of all of these and create something that is fun, is expressive, but it's also like clean and sustainable for the future. And this is what it looks like.
And sometimes people ask us, so what do you see the future of fashion becoming? And we say, well, we think that all the boxes that we have to carry with us today, all the mobile phones, they're all going to disappear, and then our clothes are going to do something really special, be embedded with sensors, be embedded like, with all the technology that we can think of, and we can turn it on and off depending on what we want to do with it. And uh, today we have a special project that we're showing you that is something that we just did with the British Airline last week, so we just launched it, it's brand new, and it's about the future of aviation and the passenger experience. And Captain Ryan, here, uh, is going to demonstrate. <laughs> so we have something that is about to increase safety for the passengers, but also is something that is really communicative and fun, so that then the crew can chat among each other and send messages and share messages, but then we can also have like the ground crew having sensors and uh, that monitor the environment so that we can have them create a sort of a map of the whole world that monitors the environment so that when you're going somewhere, you know how the weather is going to be, you know if the pollution is going to be there. So we're really trying to make everything more expressive and more fun and safe and enjoyable. Yeah. If you lower the lights a little bit, the audience can see a little bit better. So I'm controlling my jacket right now, but it's the sort of thing that I could put any pattern on using our app, and it will react instantly. So I could put emergency messages or safety messages or welcome messages with the, new, the weather of the destination. Here yeah, is a little rainy. That's London. <laughs> we have to go back there. We don't want to. <laughs> So thank you so much for listening to us today. It was great being with you. Um, thank you. Thank you.